show for you guys yes we do ladies i want to get right into it and talk about the future of the bahamas yes. are the youth finally taking over what i'm referring to is the youngest uh candidate to be ratified by the fnm in bahamian history wow oh, yes 21 year old travis robinson. robinson he is a cob student and he is going after bain and grant mm -hmm. town y'all it's about to be hot now the thing yes. is um I actually was lucky enough to meet Travis mm -hmm. um, at a ceremony with the U.S. Embassy, and he's such a an amazing young man with a lot of good ideas. Now, don't don't get confused. I'm not endorsing him because <laughs> they they wouldn't pay me enough for that. But <laughs> oh. I'm just saying he's a nice guy, and of course, because he's so young, he's 21, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a lot of people have already you know expressed criticism over that. Um, so, what do you think about him being so young and running for Bain and Grand Sound? I well, think it's inspiring, man. Yeah, I absolutely. think we, we so need that. And for me, as a young voter, um, I think it's important to have people there who I feel like get the issues that I'm facing or that mm -hmm. mean the world to me mm -hmm. or that's important to me mm -hmm. um, as it pertains to you know, any political issues, mm -hmm. anything that's happening in our society. Yeah. So I'm very inspired by it. And I'm inspired by the fact that he is brave enough mm -hmm. yes. to do such a thing because I'm pretty sure he knew that people would talk oh, about it yes. and the naysayers would come out yeah. and so that takes such courage it um, does. I think, and I think it's wonderful. I, it does. I think people need to realize there's a couple things. One, youth does not equate maturity. Exactly. You got some old geriatrics in the Bahamian system, government, private, whatever, yep. and they holding on to the future of this country as they walk with their walker. Like They, <laughs> they don't believe in succession planning, they don't believe in mentoring yep. and um, like I said, age doesn't equate maturity and also, I like to point to the fact that the father of our nation, God rest his soul, so Lyndon Oscar Pinland, led the PLP when he was 26 years old. Wow. Okay? So How quickly so do we forget? We forget. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so just because you're young doesn't mean you don't have ideas and yeah. you can't mm -hmm. be a great leader because yeah. he yeah. obviously did a lot for our country I and he was only 26. I just wish our um, community as a whole would just get beyond the, the concept that you can only mm -hmm. achieve something unless you are of a certain age. When you're age. ancient, yes. if you've you know been around since Moses' exactly. time. Yep. Let, let's get beyond that, you know, and, and let's support him. I said, good yeah. going, Travis. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So another story, Anika, that we were talking about early. You were telling me about Ciara and Future and something went down. Oh, Lord, with more that. celebrity news and more double standards, of course, because, you know, if you're walking around here with boobs... You are of a lesser kind, I'm assuming. Well, of course. Oh. Power to the penis is people. But yes, in short, um, so we know the whole debacle with Ciara and Future. Mm -hmm. They had a relationship. You know, everybody loved that thug loving. And then they broke up, and now she's married to Russell Wilson. Right. You know, it was a little hot. He's so fine. Oh, he's he so, is. He's fine. Too. Mm -hmm. I just he's love him. Anyway, the so they're married, and um, recently married, too. I think just like maybe a month, two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and now Ciara's pregnant, mm -hmm. which I think which is, is wonderful. I know. Congratulations amazing. to her. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But of course, there is such a thing called the internet and really ignorant people. Yeah. Um, an article came out, and, you know, people were also like, putting their comments online, and people actually have an issue with Ciara being pregnant for her husband. I don't get it. People that call people were calling her a hoe. First of all, again, y'all know how I feel about terms like that. I don't like it. It's ridiculous. Um, it's double standard. Um, but it's it's completely and utterly bizarre. But it yeah. just it goes back to what you talk about, double standard. Yep. Let's rewind. Future has four baby bombers. Mm -hmm. Count them. Quattro. <laughs> on a ghost <laughs> trip. Quattro. I like how you would come backwards. She being the right. fourth. He has Four baby mamas, yes. and everyone praised Ciara um, for getting along with these other women yes. and for her being around his um, yep. his kids. 
But now that Russell is around, you know, baby future and, you know, they're together and happy, everyone has a problem all and of a sudden. And keep in mind, she's doing it the right way. You know, she's married. Say, I yeah. mean, when is it now like, an issue? Like, honestly, let me tell you, it would have been a huge issue if she had gone and gotten knocked up and they were mm -hmm. still just dating. They mm -hmm. would have been calling her a, uh, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an, an ultimate. ultimate. All these other kind of things, <laughs> yeah. right? The woman is actually married now, you know, yeah. by the eyes of God and law, the Bible and all the rest of mm -hmm. it. She's doing it quote unquote the right way. Yeah. How are you going to call a woman who was who was married and having a baby who's expecting It must be annoying How to can be you celebrity. Even use those words? Well speaking of baby fathers <laughs> <laughs> um, it lends to the point of, you know, what people like to call daddy issues. Mm, yeah. And, you know, the relationship your, you see that your mother and your father have, whether mm -hmm. they're together or not, or any type of relationship you see your father or male figure have as a young woman, do you guys think it affects you or not, your future relationships? Yes. It can. It absolutely can. I think um, women a lot of times end up in situations where, as we all know, that, that saying, looking for love in all the wrong places, mm -hmm. and that can be as a direct result of not really having a nurturing and loving relationship with your father, not having that male figure mm -hmm. in the home. So mm -hmm. when you get older and you're of the age that you're out there and you're dating and you're attracted mm -hmm. to men, sometimes it can work in a negative way that you are looking for someone to nurture you, but sometimes the nurturing can be, mm -hmm. you know, someone that's taking advantage of you, mm -hmm. that could end up abusing you, and because you don't really know any better, you're falling for it thinking that this is love. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, none of us are, maybe we should have one on the show. <laughs> so all I can do is talk from personal experience, and all I know is in my life, it's just my personal experience, um, my father, for me, is the blueprint of how a man should, should teach me, yeah. um, should treat me. So and that's how it should anytime be, I feel. if a guy would ever talk to me sideways or like raise his voice to me, I'm like, you can't do it because my daddy don't do exactly. that. So if my daddy yeah. can't do it to me, <laughs> you can't do it to me, yeah. brother. Yeah. But so, see, you're fortunate because mm -hmm. you have that mm -hmm. male role model. You mm -hmm. have that figure in your home, mm -hmm. and that's how you grew up. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of other females, that's not necessarily the but case. I don't think it necessarily dictates that just because someone doesn't have a male figure that they're going to be this you no, know, of course not. unbalanced looney tune. <laughs> yeah. like, no. That doesn't mean that either. Yeah, but no, I would just say, is cut and definitely dry. from my personal experience, like yeah. I look at my dad, the way he treats my mom, even my parents have been yeah. married 30 years. Awesome. Shout out to mommy and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? TV. Honestly, Tap <laughs> and Nika, I feel that that's the way it should be. You know, I, I honestly feel that we should, as, as females, Females be able mm -hmm. to have that experience Definitely. in our lives to be able to look at our fathers mm -hmm. who fortunately you know treated us in a favorable way to be able to yeah fashion our relationships after that but unfortunately again nothing's black and white nothing's cut and paste and definitely you know. so speaking of mm, okay yeah. uh, you know your father being the blueprint for your relationship and marriage and all of that Hot topic that I heard in the nail salon the other day. Mm -hmm. A lot that? of women now have made the decision to not take their husband's last name mm -hmm. or hyphenate. Is that did I say that right? Yes, yes you hyphenate. did. Hyphenate <laughs> their last names. I even know one couple on Facebook, Bahamian couple. The guy took the girl's last name. I know name. somebody oh, that's wow. done so, that. So, yeah. like, what are the pros and cons <laughs> of? of either one of those for, for you guys? I know for me, I don't think I want to change my last name. Mm -hmm. And that's because, I don't know, I feel like my identity is within my first and last name. Mm -hmm. And I fashion kind of like my business. I was about mm -hmm. to say, you're like a brand yeah. now so, by that. So. Yeah. So, and I like yeah. the way it sounds. I feel like <laughs> when you hear Anika Stewart, <laughs> just look at it. Wait, let me do it again. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Anika Stewart. Well, there in my go. opinion, listen, to, let me tell y'all, I don't know about her. I ready to take the last name Graham. Hi, Drake. Ah! <laughs> I ain't ready for it. I'll take Drake. I'll take it all, honey. But, you know, to me, a pro mm -hmm. for taking my future husband's last name would be that I would be able to evade all the parking tickets that I have in this name. Mm -hmm. Priorities. So that is my priorities, <laughs> you know. But seriously, like, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. I'm not against it yeah. or... You know, I don't, if, if, it's, I think it's something each person needs to handle on an yeah, individual mm -hmm. case and you discuss that with your partner before you get married. Don't wait <laughs> till, and you don't exactly. change your name. He's like, what up? You all have that discussion before. Yeah. But either way, it doesn't matter to yeah. me. And, you know, we just, 
it's up to people. I know, I mean, some people yeah. might, they might not like it, like you know? Or just do like the celebrities do. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, but they can say, y'all behaving women. First, y'all want to wear pants. <laughs> y'all want gender equality, and now y'all want to change our last name. The Christian Council can shut us down. I don't yeah, think anything wrong with it. Just like the celebrities do. <laughs> but listen, ladies, we have a special guest coming up um, in mm -hmm. our next segment. Mm -hmm. And um, interestingly enough, she's going to be here to discuss something with us that is based on a video that we've had an opportunity to view. Mm -hmm. Homelessness in mm -hmm. America, but particularly amongst women mm -hmm. and how do they deal with their menstrual cycle. It's something that I don't think a lot of people take into consideration. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. You're out there on the streets day after day, week after week, month after month, but how do you deal with that? Because in reality, it is something that you cannot avoid. It's going to be there mm -hmm. every single month for a great part of your life, mm -hmm. but you're homeless. How do you have the means to what should I say? Take Not care of business. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Yeah. I think yes. a lot of people don't think about it. I think when it comes to homelessness in general, I think a lot of people are, they don't take it seriously. It, they're skeptical about it. Because mm -hmm. even in the video, some of the persons, and I lived in New York for a year, and some of the persons, I looked at like, that person's homeless? Because they don't necessarily yeah. look homeless, whatever that book. is. And you really can't judge yeah. a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But anyhow, we have more to come, and we'll have our special guests in studio. We're going to delve a little bit more into this topic. Don't go anywhere. We are The Stew. We'll be back. <laughs> to win your bubble for a quarter by purchasing a raffle ticket for only 25 cents at any Island Luck location in Nassau beginning October 1st. Watch the live drawing at 2 p.m. every Monday on ILTV cable channel 224 beginning October 10th. Cutoff each week is Sunday at 6 p.m. and a new raffle begins every Monday. Boy, bring my name, give my Johnny bird. How you get up? Give my Johnny! <laughs> Welcome back to The Stew. So earlier, you guys, we talked about a very important and serious topic, homelessness among women in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Today, our very special guest, our Woman Crush Wednesday, is actually a social activist that deals with homelessness right here in the Bahamas among women and at-risk youth. Let's welcome Denise Curry. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today to talk to us about something very serious. So mm -hmm. we want to jump right into it. So first of all, I want to talk about the fact that you're this social activist, this world changer right here in our very own Bahamas, but you started out actually in journalism. Yes. I'd like to know for you to tell the audience at home, what was that turning point in your personal life that made you want to become a social activist instead of being a journalist? Well, to be honest, it wasn't a turning point. Life just happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as we all know, we go through changes in life, transitions. Um, a company I was working for shut down, essentially. So I was placed in a situation where I had to do something to survive. I was a single mother at the time, three kids. Um, rather than just staying home doing nothing, I just went out there and began to volunteer. So in my volunteerism, I just stayed. It just stuck with me. I just stayed and I continued on in that field. Right. Was the interest in at-risk youth and women's advocacy something, though, that you always wanted to concentrate on as opposed to other areas of volunteerism? Well, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I am <laughs> at-risk youth. I, I still consider myself at 30-something years old <laughs> to be an at-risk youth. Okay. Um, I had my first child at 16. Okay. I came from an environment, um, a, a, a abusive situation. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty much had to run for my life to get out. Wow. So the passion was always was there. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Amazing. Okay. So the article or video we saw earlier mm -hmm. addressed homelessness in America, mm -hmm. and we saw that 
these women have issues, a, a critical issue that people don't pay attention to mm -hmm. is the fact that, okay, they're homeless, but being a woman on top of that, the issues are like 20 times over. Yes. And one <laughs> of the things that people don't really think about that I never really thought about is that, you know, these women who are homeless, they have their periods. Mm -hmm. How do they survive seeing mm -hmm. as they may not have the resources? Mm -hmm. So could you talk to us about your experience dealing with homeless women and mm -hmm. at-risk women in the Bahamas and how they deal with those challenges? Because, you know, we look at America as, you know, our, the big, amazing nation, and we mm -hmm. need to do more things that they're doing. They're so advanced, and they're so far ahead of us as a tiny nation. Mm -hmm. But they, in New York City, it's the first state to actually give access to tampons mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. pads for homeless people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want to know, what are we doing in the Bahamas for people who may be homeless? And we, the thing is, the difference, mm -hmm. they have shelters. We don't. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, have, we, ha we don't have any government-funded shelters. Right. We have shelters that are assisted by the government. Um, but yeah, we are nowhere near where um, the resources that New York City and those other states have. Mm -hmm. So you saw in the video where the woman was able to go into the bathroom and sh um, clean. Where mm -hmm. in the Bahamas can, can any woman yeah, do right. that yeah. Um, yeah. comfortably? Mm -hmm. um, so there are many issues. Um, the gov when you go into the restrooms in the states, you put your quarter in and you get the tampon or the yes, pad. Right. And we don't have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So as simple as that is, we don't realize that, hey, these women have the very same issues that we have, mm -hmm. yeah. but like you said, it's multiplied by a million, a not million. 20, yeah. Yeah. a million. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then with our culture, back in the day when our grandparents, if someone fell on tough times, mm -hmm. the door was open. Right. We have lost that sense of family and that sense of community. community. And that's yeah. sad as it is, that's the way we are. Mm -hmm. So we can drive past the our sister, our cousin, uh, on, on the side of the road and just keep on moving. That's what uh, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. you know, about what are the misconceptions you feel that Bahamians have when it comes to women and homelessness mm -hmm. in the Bahamas? That it's, that we're all there because of some fault of our or own. Or that you did, yeah. Yeah, you did some something drugs bad. or yeah. she wants to be there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no woman wants to be on the street. Yeah. There's a lack of support. And as, as many family, I mean, we looked at, we had the conversation earlier that, hey, we all know each other, but we don't know, know each, each other. other. Not on a personal Not level. A personal level. Yeah. So we go through these things. So, and to be honest, the average woman is one paycheck away from homelessness. Wow. wow. And the storm was an eye opener. Yes. We yes. had to do without for what? four or five weeks, yeah. some people are just recovering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I haven't seen a paycheck. How am I surviving? Wow. So if I did not have that support system, I would have been on the streets. I've lost my home. Yeah. I, I can't go to work because I have to deal with this home situation. I have to provide for my kids. I don't have that support system, so I'm gonna end up on the streets. So and you it's as simple as that. You talked about, we know there are things we don't have in place and we need to improve mm -hmm. as a country, but what is it that you're doing or organizations that that your partner with are doing mm -hmm. so that maybe persons who are watching and persons like ourselves can maybe throw support mm -hmm. behind because people are probably unaware mm -hmm. of how they can help or if they can even help. Mm -hmm. Well, Salvation Army is a state funded, um, government funded homeless shelter. The problem with Salvation Army is that a woman with a child, a boy child over the age of 10 mm -hmm. can't bring that child in there. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. we need assistance. I would say the Salvation, need, um, Salvation Army needs assistance in that regard. Mm -hmm. We have the Great Commission. They have um, Great Commission Ministries. They have four or five houses that they house people in. They have the food program. Um, they have the after school program. Um, so they need funding. They need um, financial assistance. They need physical volunteers assistance, they need go. volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always about money. money. Mm -hmm. right. And as simple as donating a pack of pads mm -hmm. on a monthly right. basis. I would never yeah. think as you simple as that. Think so, totally me. Let me tell yeah. you, I, I mean, I've seen homeless women obviously here, um, but I don't think it dawned on me mm -hmm. until just now, because that's something so important, it's so right? Important, it's right. like, it's this happens yeah. every month. Because yeah. yeah. we know that we're yeah. able to just pop to the pharmacy or the food store yeah. and just yeah. get a pack of pads. Yeah. And I know, have you ever been in a situation where, you know, you're on your monthly and you yep. may it come and you, you, you freak out? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we're able to go and like deal yeah. with that situation and exactly. go, and, go to the no supermarket idea. and yeah. buy something really quick. But yeah, Or at the very least, just ask someone. Ask yeah. someone. So a lot of the donations that we make to these places, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army is a great commission. Yeah. Their clothing items, their food items, right. but no one is doing wow. Even with the call, the hurricane call for items yeah. to donate to the different um, Grand wow. Bahama, Andres, mm -hmm. South Beach, no one thought that. We don't that, think about hey, the natural. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's as simple as and that. And that is something we all go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
every month. Yep, every month, <laughs> every month. without Cannot fail. Wow. It. Yep. Wow. wow. So in terms of people throwing support behind you you're an independent I'm independent and you work with the so great what Commission we have Salvation um, Army. I've partnered with Great Commission Salvation Army Red Cross so what we have been doing through my organization independently every month we put together bags and these are young children these are high school students college level students um, so when they save up money and we buy care packages so in the care packages would be tampons um, and we have organizations that don't need these items also so it would be tampons pads um, panty shields and like the quick snack oh you know when you're on the cycle you want a chocolate you want something right. so those That's quick so items yeah. so it's, it's a, a mini bag like a and just pack. to give out it's a period <laughs> pack you just give it out yeah that. it's a period pack very so thoughtful. those i mean you don't have to do it through my organization but mm -hmm. just that's something anyone can do yeah. on their own and just give it out mm -hmm. um in addition to t making these donations inclusive of the food items you i mean you can't look past it. Inclusive mm -hmm. of the food items, take them down the Great Commission, Salvation Army, Red Cross. These places need them. Yeah. Um, do, I just want to ask, do you happen to have numbers um, as it pertains? Okay. And um, stats at all. Yeah. And, which, is, which is funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. We know this information exists, yeah. but no one is compiling the data. And if wow. the data is being compiled, where is it being stored? Right. Um, yeah. We can go and do a Google search and get stats from every other country, but right. we don't have stats yeah. for our own. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to the Department of St Statistics, um, I think as maybe 2012, mm -hmm. and we're in 2016. So, wow. yeah, wow. so I don't think there's any up to date statistics. Another on this. classic example of how we fail as a country to mm -hmm. get proper information so that we can properly properly yeah. regulate these social ills and issues mm -hmm. so that we can do something about it. Yeah, but that's why we need to make sure that we throw our support behind persons mm -hmm. like yeah. Denise. One so you've heard all this wonderful information she's given today. Definitely don't rest on your laurels. Mm -hmm. Support persons mm -hmm. like her. Support Salvation Army and the Great, Great Commission. Commission. And mm -hmm. Denise, we just thank you for all the amazing yes. work that you're doing yes. in the country. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go unnoticed. And we're so appreciative for thank being you. here today. And thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. We have more of the still coming up. Monday, Monday, play quick draw. Tuesday, Wednesday, play quick draw. Thursday, Friday, play quick draw. Play Saturday, Sunday, every day just for you. Every 30 minutes is a draw. You can win it all. You can win it. Watch the number fall on two to four. Hold up, quick draw. Quick draw, the Bahamas' first live three ball game. Exclusively powered by Island Luck. Jackpot! Anytime, anywhere. Download the app today at islandlock.com. Hey guys, you're watching The Stew and this is your tech tip. Today, I'll be teaching you how to use social media to bring awareness to your nonprofit organization. The first thing you'll need to do is create pages like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and ensure that the purpose of your organization is spelled out precisely, especially for newcomers who aren't aware of your organization. Next up, be sure to include a contact button. Both Facebook and Instagram gives you the option to make this button live so that if someone wants to reach out to you to donate to your cause, they can do so. The next thing you want to do is to constantly provide information and updates on the purpose of your organization on your social media pages. Always assume that people do not know, so it is your job to provide them with the relevant information. Use photos of subjects and infographics to give people statistical information on the purpose of your organization. And finally, use video content to show your audience the outreach initiatives that you and your team are carrying out in your community. This has been your tech tip on The Stew. I'll see you guys next time. Vegas is closer than you think. 
Visit our electrifying select locations, showcasing an amazing sportsbook playing live all the top games and races. Take advantage of all the winnings you can handle with hundreds of the newest slots and casino games. Come into Island Luck today at any of our 60 world-class locations. The ultimate gaming and entertainment experience is at Island Luck. As a single professional woman, I value the sense of security Venetian West provides. Knowing that there is 24-hour security helps me sleep better at night. For us, the numbers just made sense. We were able to move into our condo for $1,300 per month. That was less than what we previously paid for rent. We were looking to downsize. Our Venetian West condo was the perfect fit. We were able to move into a fully furnished condo for $1,700 per month, thanks to the furniture packages offered by Brickell Management Group. There was no hassle. for tuning into the stew. Boy, we've had an absolutely wonderful show today. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you ladies have as well. Yeah. Thank you so much to Denise Curry for speaking with us on the issues of advocacy in the country. Get involved, get involved. Look up the Salvation Army, the Great Commission, or whatever other volunteerism get involved, strikes you. Get involved. Just get involved. But I loved our topics that we that. covered. Take us out singing that, Les. Get involved, Let's get involved. Give the baby back in love. Uh, 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 uh. Give the baby back in love. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway. <laughs> We can do that a little yeah, later okay. on, but it's been great. Thank you so much for joining us on this too. Thank you for Anika and her tech talk. Be sure to check that out and so much more on all of our social media platforms, ILTV Studios. We will see you next time right here on this too, <laughs> 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. on BTC Flow and Cable 224. Yes, that's us. <laughs> see you next time.